For the past 19 years, Chris Bird has been the director of Alachua County's Environmental Protection Department. An environmental engineer by training, Chris is the current chairman of the board of directors of the National Association of Local Government Professionals. Previously, Chris was president of the Florida Local Environmental Resources Agencies. Welcome, Chris. Hey, good to see you. So, Chris, the public discourse about water has just been intense the last couple of months. As you know, we interviewed Dr. Bob Knight from the mm -hmm. University of Florida recently, and uh, I just thought it would be a good idea to, to bring you on and kind of get the, the county's perspective and your perspective as an environmental protection mm -hmm. professional. Uh, I woke up this morning, and it was like any other day. I, I turned on my faucet, and an abundance of clean water came out, and uh, I guess all I'm asking you today is uh, can you guarantee me that that will always be the case? Um, yeah, it would be great if we could. I, I think um, we're still very blessed in, in our area and we have this incredibly productive water source called the Florida Aquifer, which actually runs all the way up into South Carolina and through a big chunk of Georgia. So it's, it's not just in Florida. We're really lucky. It's, it's a huge source of clean water. Um, there's been a lot of um, impacts on that and threats over the last few years. There's been a lot of concern about water pollution. Um, it seems like it's only when we get into a drought like we are now that the, the concern about water levels and lakes drying up and springs um, not flowing anymore and all of that really comes into play. You know, I've, I've been through these drought cycles, having been in Alachua County for a long time, and I don't know, this one just feels different to me somehow. I don't know if it's the level of public scrutiny this time, mm -hmm. or uh, w to what do you attribute just the amazing amount of public discourse this time? It, I think one of the issues is that it's not just the lack of rainwater. It's, it's clearly also the amount of pumping of the aquifer that's going on. And even though there's a lot of talk recently about trying to get people not to water their yards as much, and that's going to be an important measure for people to take, the, the challenge we have is that when it's this dry and there's such a lack of rainfall that some of our other big um, water users, particularly agriculture, they're forced to pump more water. So you've really got, in some ways, you may have more water being pumped out of the aquifer and therefore dropping the levels in the rivers and in the lakes and in the in the springs than in other times. So it's, we're really in a tough situation because agriculture depends on this you know, cheap abundance of water. And, and they're, at this point, they're really pumping more than ever. You know, Chris, I, I think you may have just answered this question. But uh, mm -hmm. an, another thing I've noticed just in the kind of dramatic conversation that's happening right now is the algae blooms seem to be just uh, larger or, or more intense than they've been in previous years. Is that accurate or is it just that we're noticing more? Well, I know, for example, the Santa Fe River. I mean, we're noticing things with the algae in, the, in that river that are very unusual. And it's, it's this, the causes of this are somewhat complex. The fact that the water is um, slowed down in the river because the water levels drop, um, there's less flow. And the water has more time to heat up. As it becomes shallower, the sun really just kind of heats the water temperature up to the point that um, you're, you're really creating conditions that are more conducive to algae. Um, the Santa Fe River is complicated. It's mainly fed by spring water. And when we don't have rain, we don't have some of the, the surface water in the swamps that are draining into it. So you get, it's ironic, you get this very clear water, which really looks pretty. The problem is it lets more sunlight in, and the sunlight actually is helping to grow the algae. So we've just got this situation that's, that's difficult. The other issue is that without the rainwater coming into the system, it's concentrating the pollution that's already in the river. So we have a lot of what we call nitrogen pollution in the river from fertilizers and septic tanks and 
municipal wastewater plants, when we have less rainwater, that gets concentrated because there's not enough um, of, of that other water, storm water, to kind of wash it out. So all of that kind of adds up to a problem. And the, the other issue, I don't think we've seen it too much in Santa Fe yet, but in some of the lakes, when that water temperature really goes up and the algae starts kicking in, and then you have decomposition of all of that, it really just sucks the oxygen out of the water and you can have fish kills. So it's not a good situation. Have you been seeing fish kills locally? We, we haven't. We've seen a little bit in some of the smaller lakes. Um, you know, it's something though we will not be surprised to be getting announcements of that as, as the, if this continues and, you know, the water quality continues to diminish. S certainly something that's near and dear to all of us at the county is Post Springs, which mm. uh, is just a, a beautiful park and a beautiful spring. Can you give us an update on, on the health? Mm. How's the patient there? Yeah. Well, it's, it's really sad, and I, I wish I had some good news on that. I mean, hopefully, eventually, we'll get through this. If you go to Post Springs now, it's, it's actually closed because there's construction to redo the swimming area. Um, it's, it's really on life support. It's barely flowing. Normally it flows, the average flow is something like 47 cubic feet per second, which is kind of an engineering term, but if you can imagine that, we're down to below a quarter of a foot per second. So the, the flow out of Post Springs is almost down to zero. And if, if we, unless we get a tremendous amount of rain, and it would probably have to be a couple of tropical storms in a row, it's, it's really going to probably stop flowing. It could easily happen this summer. And we don't know when that's ever happened. We don't have any records that that's ever happened before. You know, you, you talk about flow. And uh, well, before I get into that, actually, are, are, there, are there specific steps? I mean, what, what are you asking the public? What, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Do you put out guidelines of conservation guidelines or what it is you're, you're hoping folks will do? Yeah, I think the single most important thing is to minimize the amount of watering of your, your yard and your landscaping. And that's really hard to do and, and we have such beautiful landscaping and people really take a lot of pride in their yards. We're to the point now where we really are going to have to choose between keeping the lawns looking really green and vibrant and losing our springs. I mean, we're really getting down to that point. So probably for, for the average citizen, the most important thing to do is really think hard if you have to water so much. And, um, you know, we, we, we may end up like some other parts of the country where they've actually had to prohibit um, watering for non-essential purposes. We're not there yet. Right. Um, EPD is obviously involved in this. Um, for, for folks that don't know, are there other government agencies and structures that are involved in water conservation or water decisions? I guess it's broader than conservation. Right. Well, in Florida, we have five water management districts. And it's the, the structure here is somewhat unique. There's really not many places in the country. However, the, the, the water situation in Florida is so unique that it probably warrants a, a certain framework. The water management districts govern consumptive use of water. So they ultimately have the authority that's given to them by the state legislature. Local governments certainly are players with this, and I think the water management districts really rely on the local governments because we're really on the street. We're kind of like the street patrol. And so we are trying to work with the districts. Um, when they adopt emergencies for water shortages, a part of that is trying to deal with um, um, landscape irrigation, for example. And so that's, that's the part that we really try to work with them closely on because we are closer to where all of this is going on. Now, go back to the consumptive use permit. What, does every business have to have a consumptive use permit? Are there only certain mm -hmm. classifications of businesses, or how does that work? The, the structure is that um, larger users of water, but for example, a water utility, a, a, f a farm operation that's pumping significant amount, and then industrial users, typically have to have these permits. And the, di the districts in our, in our county were actually split between the St. John's River and the Suwannee River Water Management District. So we're actually split between two. The rules are slightly different, but basically both of them require at certain levels you have to have these wells permitted, and there's actually an allocation that's given to you in terms of how much water you're allowed to pump. And um, that's a huge issue of contention right now. There's actually, in Marion County, there's a proposal for a large 
farm operation, a new farm operation that would pump something like 13 million gallons a day, which is as much or more than the entire city of Ocala. Um, but this, there's a system of allocating the water. In Florida, it's considered, um, the Florida aquifer is really waters of the state. It's not considered private property, but there is a permitting system to tr try to allocate that. And there's a lot of, a um, lot goes into that in terms of what is the, um, the priority allocations. So do we, uh, I mean, I, I guess part of what I'm hearing is right now the pumping is outpacing the national, the natural replenishment of the springs. Yeah. Is there some plan to, to uh, stiffen up the regulations in terms of approving these permits or do you, has the water management district taken a, uh, uh, a stand on that or? I, I don't know if they've taken any official action yet. Obviously with all of the public concern and the reality that our water levels are down they're taking a harder look at it. Um, I think from a local government perspective in Alachua County, we are concerned that they're, the fact that they really don't even know the impact of these permits, uh, you know, I can't tell you, and I don't think the Water Management District can tell you exactly how much of the loss at Post Springs is due to the lack of rain and how, mov how much of it is due to overpumping. I mean, we really don't have a complete handle on that. And so there's a concern that until we really figure that out, maybe there needs to be, um, you know, much more of uh, scrutiny of these permits. Um, what we do know is, is that, for example, the springs, the, the water that flows out of a spring, it's sort of like a pitcher of water, and if you can imagine the spout on a pitcher of water, the water coming out of the springs, or even like the Santa Fe River, it's the water that's flowing out of that spout. And so the, the entire pitcher may be full of water, but it's only when it overflows enough to reach that elevation that, it, that we have a spring flowing or a river flowing. And it, it doesn't take much. If you get right below that level, that elevation, um, you can stop the spring or you can have a river dry up. Right. And the concern is that just a, 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 a slight increase in pumping could bring those levels down below where the spring will flow. That already happened with Hornsby Spring, which is where Camp Kawakwa is in Alachua County, which is really, a, you know, it's a great, it, historically at least, a great public swimming area. They had to shut down the, the um, swimming area because the spring quit flowing. We're almost there with Post Springs. Um, Jenny Springs, which is just down the river a little bit, is still doing pretty good, uh, probably because its elevation is a little bit lower in terms of where the water is coming from. But I think what we know is that it doesn't take much to drop that. Even if you drop it a few inches, you could make a spring stop flowing. Right, right. I understand that the, uh, is it the St. John's River Water Management District or the Suwannee River Water Management District that declared a water shortage? Um, the Suwannee River Water Management District, a couple of weeks ago, their governing board did do that, and, um, and they, I think it goes into effect in, on June 13th. That's when it goes into effect. For most um, residents, the difference is that they are um, going to restrict watering of yards, landscape irrigation, to once a week. Currently, during sa daylight savings time, normally um, residents are allowed to water twice a week. In the winter, only once a week. The, the Suwannee District has determined that the, the emergency is severe enough that they're going to require citizens to go back to once a week. And um, in Alachua County, we're split between t the two districts. St. John's hasn't done that yet. We are encouraging them to do it, but it's, we are also asking them to um, allow us to have one set of rules within Alachua County. So what we would like to see is, is really the, um, the Suwannee's rules, which are actually right now more protective of the springs on the Santa Fe River, we'd like to see those rules apply throughout Alachua County and the municipalities. And that can be confusing. I'm, I'm looking at a map here and it shows, it looks like it's roughly half and half. I guess the Suwannee River Water Management District covers maybe a little bit more area than the St. John's. It covers a little more area, but population-wise, it doesn't cover as much of Gainesville. Oh, and so I if see. you really start looking at population, St. John's um, you know, may actually have more people in it or, or just about as much. Um, but again, it's confusing. Um, 
it's confusing for everybody, and we really think that it would, um, we'd rather err on the side of caution. So what we're going to try to encourage is that um, we use the once a week water tr watering, for example, that would be throughout the whole county. But the county doesn't have the authority to, to make that decree? It has to come from the Water Management it, District? It does. We've been in discussions with them, and we're hopeful that they will work it out together so that they're, they will, that St. John's, for example, will respect the Suwannee's interest. One of the things that's important about Alachua County, th there's an artificial line that really separates the two water management districts. And because our county is mainly a groundwater county, in, in other words, most of the water, you see some water in the lakes, but most of the water is really in the Florida aquifer underground. And all, a lot of the entire county the groundwater flows toward the Santa Fe River, even the part that's in the St. John's district. So in some ways, those boundaries, those artificial boundaries of the districts, in terms of the problem we're having with water and the springs drying up, those boundaries don't really help us. And that's why we really would like to see the entire county covered by this, because that would protect the groundwater better. And as far as enforcing these regulations, EPD does provide as assistance in that. We do. I assume you've hired a brand new enforcement staff to... Uh... Um, well, and that's <laughs> been one of the challenges. You know, all, all local governments and, and water management districts are going through budget cuts. And we've, really what we've done in Alachua County, we've, we haven't hired more people. We've reassigned people because this has become such an important issue. We have reassigned some of our staff to be more involved with this. And so, um, yes, we, we, we are assisting the water management districts. We also depend on the municipalities. Um, they, they, they have to join us. And so one of the things we're going to be doing over the next few weeks is reaching back out to our, um, our municipalities and asking them to join the county and the water management districts. Um, we really all need to be in this together. And we, we all have the same interest, I think. Let me tell you the thing that I hear most often. I was at a party just the other night, and the subject turned to water. And it seems like that subject is coming up everywhere I go lately. One thing that I hear commonly is uh, Jacksonville, or Duval County, mm -hmm. is using up all the water that's underneath Alachua County. Uh, wh what is the, the truth to that, or, or the well, myth? Well, um, I guess the... Um the one issue, in, in Alachua County, we've been anxious for years. Um, there was talk about building a pipeline on I-75 and running the water from up here in our springs in the Suwannee River, like piping it down to Tampa and Orlando. And, um, you know, in the past, we worried about a pipeline. That was sort of our worst nightmare. What we know is happening is that Jacksonville is pumping, right now they're pumping around 160 million gallons a day out of the groundwater. And because of the geology over there, and they're so close to the ocean, there's virtually none of that water is getting back into the aquifer. So they're, they're dehydrating the aquifer by the rate of about 160 million gallons a day, with, with virtually none recharging that aquifer to take its place. And when it rains in Jacksonville and Duval County, most of that rainwater either evaporates or it goes out to the ocean through the St. Johns River. It's just the geology they have is there's very little opportunity for the rainwater, even in a good year when we're, we're getting a lot of rain, for it to ever make it back down to the aquifer. So if they're pumping 160 million gallons a day and they're not putting any back in, something's got to give. And what really starts happening with time is that you, you, and we're seeing it, we're seeing that the influence of their pumping is marching westward and it hasn't reached Technically, it hasn't reached um, Alachua County yet, but it's coming our way. And so one of the challenges we have with some of the coastal counties is in, they tend to be you know, high urban areas. Um, they're not putting the water back in the aquifer the way um, we need to if we're going to try to protect the spring. So there is some truth in it. Um, I, I'm not willing to s blame all of this on Jacksonville. I think we got to look a little bit harder of, of what they're doing how that's affecting North Central Florida. We've also got to look at our own um, situation, and you know, I think we have to lead by example. I mean, we can't just blame this on Jacksonville. Does Jacksonville's pumping affect Post Springs right now? I don't know if it directly does. It may indirectly, 
because again the water's got to come from somewhere and it may affect the spring shed that's feeding post springs. Um, it, it gets kind of complicated but basically there's a certain geographic area that rainwater that falls on the ground if it's lucky, if it makes it back down to the aquifer, it will eventually discharge into the springs on the Santa Fe River. And that geographic area can actually be altered based on this pumping that we're talking about and, and where there's large amounts of pumping. Likewise, we have a concern about this proposed new big um, uh, cattle ranch in Marion County. That's Adena, Adena yeah, Springs. Adena Springs. Yeah. That, where they want to put that is in between Silver Springs and Orange Lake. And Orange Lake is in Alachua County. Orange Lake, the water level is, is seriously down in Orange Lake. Not the first time it's happened, not like Post Springs. However, it's really down. And the, the concern is where they're proposing to pump this 13 million gallons a day of water. Uh, and it would be a new pump. It, it wouldn't be like an existing situation. That, that could impact not only Silver Springs, but it could also, in Alachua County, really hurt Orange Lake going forward. So there's just a lot of issues where these issues seem to be connected. I guess there was an extension on the permitting process with Adena Springs, is that correct? Yeah, my understanding is the district's still trying to get more information and, um, you know. Have you heard a, a timeline on when they're yeah, going to be considering? I think it's probably a couple of months away. I mean, that's, okay. that's my sense that, that it's, it's going to, and you know, it's, it's certainly not helping the applicant that we're, having so many problems with water levels. I mean, everybody's really sensitive to this issue. Right. Another thing that I hear uh, when I'm out and about is uh, people are concerned about the uh, effects of bottled water, bottling plants, these huge bottling plants. Yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, is that a dramatic amount of water being pumped? Are there others in the pipeline seeking approval? Or what have you heard about that? In Alachua County right now, I'm not aware that we have any bottled water plants. Now, on the Santa Fe River, um, in at least in Gilchrist County, there are there's at least one that I'm familiar with. It, it's certainly a concern that people have, um, and I'm not tr I'm not trying to downplay that that there's legitimate concerns. However, if you just do the simple math, and you look at how much water is being pumped out of the ground, and the, the springs really don't care who's pumping the water; they just care that they have enough water. If you really look at it, it's not, uh, it's not one of the major, at least so far, it's not one of the major consumptive uses. Um, we have a lot more from agriculture and from um, municipal use. And when you think about water leaving the, the region in trucks, you know, bottled water, um, you really also need to think about how much water is leaving the county or leaving the area because it's evaporating into the air and it's going out to the ocean, and we, it's, it's, there's a lot of other water being exported out of the, out of the area um, other than just bottled water. However, I mean, I think this whole issue, it's making us have to look at all of these uses, and we're gonna have to reprioritize um, what are the highest and best uses of the water. Right. And in the past, we've been able to, we've kind of felt like we've had enough water for everybody, um, there's clearly some uses, and I think a lot of people would argue that agriculture, I mean, we need to feed people. There, the, you know, is, is that more important than keeping your grass, like, very, very green? Probably. A lot of this, you know, ends up being a policy decision that the, the policy makers have to make. I know agriculture is very, very important to us, and I know it's a very large water user. Is agriculture water usage monitored in Alachua County or? Most of the large agricultural users are not required to meter and report the actual uses. Water utilities typically are, and other industrial users, when they get a consumptive use permit, typically they've got to have a meter on their well and they've got to report, you know, how much did they actually pump. Actually in Florida right now, at least in our area, agriculture, um, it's pretty much voluntary, and they're they're given a permit to pump so much, but there's no there's no um, speedometer, I guess. There's right. no there's no way to really know that, and I th that's an issue that's really coming up. To in fact, there was a, a discussion um, just last week where the the state agricultural water policy folks got together, and they're talking about these issues. But in Alachua County, um, agriculture use is a is a huge chunk. In fact, if you look at our whole region. 
And we've done like a water footprint for all of the counties in North Florida, even the counties up in South Georgia, because we know they're connected to the Florida aquifer. And what we found out is that really in North Florida, um, in our area, there's actually more water pumped for agriculture in Alachua County than even Marion County or Gilchrist County, some of the counties around us. So it's, it's a major um, consumptive use in this area. Chris, are there, uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, I know that you guys are always recommending, you know, wise use of water in the home, low flow shower heads and uh, not leaving water running. And, uh, you know, in the last, I think, three or four days, we've gotten some rain. Right. So if we have a nice wet, rainy season, will, will all of our problems be solved? Or? I, you know, we're so far down in the hole on the water deficit, which we're in a water deficit, a, a pretty serious one. Unfortunately, to really catch up, um, you know, the, the, the number of tropical storms and hurricanes that it will take to, to catch up, I don't think any of us would really want to go through that. And, that, and that's sort of the dilemma we've got. It's, we're, so f we're so far behind now that it, it just is going to take a tremendous amount of rain. And even if we go back into a normal, what we, some of us remember, rainy thunderstorms every afternoon, summer, um, I don't know if that's enough. Uh, we're, you know, we're just so dry and we're so dehydrated. Um, and, you know, the part we can't control the rain. Um, the part we can control is how much we're using ourselves. And, um, you know, that when I say ourselves, that's just not residential. It's just not landscape irrigation. It's also agriculture. It's also, you know, do you leave the water running when you're washing your car or do you put a shut off nozzle on it so whenever, you know, you're not having to use it, it's not pouring water out. Do you set your sprinkler so they're not watering the street? I mean, there's all these little things. Do you fix, fix that leaky toilet? Right. Do you think when you're um, buying a new washing machine, do you think about buying a more water efficient washing machine? I mean, there's all these little decisions that can really, those are ones we really can make a difference on. Right. Well, Chris, as always, uh, thank you for coming on. It's always very uh, enlightening and I appreciate your time. Thanks, thanks for having me. SocialSecurity.gov is so friendly. It makes the crankiest Klingon smile. We used to write letters to each other a lot. A lot of the notes, they were just really dark. Expressions of anger when he was mad, he hit things. He said something to me about uh, killing himself. You have to take it seriously. The risk is too great. You have to um, try and help them get help. Tell somebody, tell an adult counselor, parent, whatever. What are you going to do? Let them destroy themselves? I, mean, I don't see much of a choice at all. Hey, how's it going? Meet my friend Lou. Lou only says something when it's very important. Right now, he's saying replace my battery. Now he's saying fire, get out of the house. Once this guy gets going, there's no shutting him up. Smoke alarms, a sound you can live with.